Hi, welcome back to Better Than Yourself. Today on Better Than Yourself, fermented apples. I'm gonna do something a little different today. I've uh, been making some fermented apples and I thought I'd, I'd play around with, you know, I've read online that people like to use different apples. There's, you know, some Russian secret recipes for making fermented apples that you need these special yellow apples that I don't even know if you can buy around here. So what I think I wanna do is try a couple of different, I went to the supermarket and I bought one of each kind of apple that I could find. And then I thought, you know, when you're fermenting, you're kind of going for two things. You're going for taste and you're going for texture. So the texture is going to come from the apples, the different kinds of, you know, the d varieties of apples that we're using. For taste, we're going to add a couple of different spices, some ginger, some lemon peel, cinnamon. Try a couple of different things and we'll take good notes and then we'll check back in in a couple of days and see what came out and what we like and, well, what's destined for the compost pile. Stay tuned. I think for our first victim, we'll do a Golden Delicious with uh, lemon zest. So in doing your fermented apples, you definitely want to get the peels off. The peels don't really ferment very well, and a lot of people say it makes the, the apples go soft. So also, if you're not buying organic fruit, they say you should peel it. You shouldn't eat the skins of non-organic fruit. So if you're not popping the extra $4 for organic apples, go ahead and peel them. Let's make some room. So we'll peel our apple. If you watch the apple butter video, you saw how I clean apples. I like to use a melon baller. Basically just take the melon baller and take the center right out of the apple. And clean the ends. And then from here we'll just do some, I guess we'll do little cubes. Do a little, I washed this. A little bit of lemon zest, no uh, white, just the yellow. We'll stick a couple of pieces of that in there. All right, jar number one is complete. What we're gonna do, just like our other ferments, pack your fruit in the jar and then some kind of a little weight to hold everything under the surface of the brine. We'll get to the brine in a minute. Let's do a couple more apples. Our next victim is a jazz apple. Same drill. We're gonna peel it, cut it, pack it in a jar. Remove any brown spots, bruises. Jar. This is my lunch. We're gonna have some cloves. How about six? Wait. Jar number two. Jar number three. We've got a Granny Smith. I think with our Granny Smith apple, we'll have some whole cardamom pods. Three or four is sufficient. Shake them down in there. Next on the chopping block is a honey crisp. Label our jar. 
And we will have, what are we down to? How about some uh, candy ginger slices? Ginger's yummy with apple. Next contestant is a Fuji. When you're slicing your apples, try to get the chunks all relatively the same size. You don't, perfection's not important, but it's good to have everything about the same size so it ferments at about the same rate. All right, jar number five is a Fuji with cinnamon stick. Now, just like every other ferment we've done, we're gonna just cover these over with brine to protect them from air. So I'm gonna use a quart of water and a tablespoon and a half of salt. I've got my usual Celtic sea salt. If I were doing a bigger batch, I'd usually use two quarts of water and three tablespoons. But for this, we're just gonna use a quart, or a little experiment here, a quart of water and a tablespoon and a half of salt. So we'll just fill these. We probably want our little weight at the ready here so they don't float up. Maybe put a little bit of water in the jar. And we're ready. I'll let these, these don't take very long. These are full of sugar so that you know they're gonna ferment really quickly. And I'll probably let them go for about two or three days before I give the first one a taste. And then um, when I think they're ready, I'll turn the camera back on and we'll have a look at them. See you then. All right, welcome back to Fermenting Apples. It's been about a week. I tasted these three days in, and they just tasted kind of salty. There was a little bit of ferment taste, but mostly just sort of brine and apples, so they didn't really taste like they did anything. Um, now it's been about a week, and I was just cleaning up the mold on a couple of them here. Let me, let me grab the camera, and I'll show you what we're looking at. Yeah, if you can see here, there's just a little bit of mold forming on the edges. The brine is clear, there's nothing underneath here, so we'll just scoop that off. What I want to do is just kind of lift it out of there. I just got some clear water here. I need to just kind of float it up on the top of the brine again, and we can... Oh, you know what? <laughs> My uh, lemon peel floated up, and the uh, edges of it got moldy. So, yeah, you definitely got to keep all your fruit below the surface of the of the brine or you're gonna have problems all right but luckily it's kind of solid and it kind of floats so not a problem problem averted all right so we've got our, our ferments from last week we've got um, golden delicious and lemon my lemon rind that were molded jar number two was a uh, jazz apple and some cloves jar number three was a granny smith and some cardamom pods it's just, yeah, there's a little spot there, just a little, little floater. Sometimes you get some little bu persistent bubbles that look like they're just kind of little soap bubbles, kind of uh, chalky looking bubbles. It's uh, yeast that's forming. Nothing to worry about. Um, just clean them up. The rest look okay. And it's just those first two jars. So I think we're all right. How are we going to start here? We got our Golden Delicious and uh, lemon in jar number one. And we're judging for texture from the apple species, variety, and uh, taste. Those are nice. A little citrus zest in there. Kind of taking that, that dullness off the, uh, the ferment, that kind of, I don't know, not a moldy flavor, but it's not. It's it's something unique to some of these flavors you get when you ferment. Jar number two was the jazz apple with cloves. Mmm, that's nice and crisp in the center, actually. Um, there's actually quite a bit of apple left. 
Mmm. These cloves are nice. Give a nice rich taste. This is the turbid, the most turbid of the lot, the uh, Granny Smith and Cardamom. They have a wonderful aroma. Interesting. They take my, take me to the Middle East. Those are the firmest of the bunch so far. In here, the uh, that dehydrated ginger we used kind of rehydrated a full size, and we've got mmm, looks like an apple pie, only tart, and sour. Those are good. Mmm. All right, finally, we got jar number five was uh, Fuji and cinnamon, Fuji apple, and our uh, cinnamon stick, kind of rehydrated and unwrapped a little bit. Got a little spot here. But otherwise, hmm. It's like, a, like if you made an apple pie and fermented it. Those are good too. Conclusion pick whatever kind of apples you like, try a bunch. I'll probably just end up pouring all of these together um, and just maybe I'll have a real complex flavor. But by and large, I think I think all the apples fermented quite nicely. I like them all. I think they'd be good with granola. I think they'd be good on pancakes. Well, I hope you enjoyed fermenting apples. I think we found out that just about everything ferments real well, stays nice and crisp, ends up having a nice flavor. Pick some stuff that you like and throw it in the jar and, and see what you get after a week. I'm probably just going to mix all these together. Um, the tastes are distinct but not really strong, so I think maybe just kind of a mix them all together and see what I get. I'm not just going to store all these jars in my fridge. But uh, I hope you're uh, enjoying these fermenting projects. Hey, and a, a big thanks to everybody that subscribed lately. If you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button. You know, all the old subscribers that have been around for a while and the people leaving comments, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy to answer all your comments about fermenting and anything that you're trying to make and why it's not working, any problems that you might be having. But check out some other videos and uh, see you next time. That's what I'm calling it, fermented apple pie.